Hey everyone, I'm Michael. I'm in charge of customer success at Xano. And in this tutorial, I wanna go over the uh, Stripe Checkout API extension in Xano. Um, Stripe Checkout enables you to uh, include a uh, checkout and payment functionality into your application. So I'll go through how to set up the um, Stripe extension in Xano. Um, spend a little time in the Stripe developer portal just so you can get familiar with it. Um, and then I'll also run through just a uh, basic front end demo, uh, just so you can see the whole thing working together. And then I'll also um, go through a, a way you can sort of uh, manipulate or alter what's existing in Xano to do um, something uh, different that might be of interest for you guys. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so Stripe is a, a payment platform trusted by millions. Um, Stripe Checkout, uh, right from their documentation, uh, it creates a secure Stripe hosted payment page that lets you collect payments quickly, it works across devices, and can help increase your conversion. Um, so um, over to Xano in our marketplace, if you go to the payment section, you'll see the Stripe Checkout extension. Um, you can just easily install it to your workspace. I already have installed mine. Um, comes with five different API endpoints. Uh, we're really only gonna focus on two, because um, that's really all you'll need. Um, a database table, um, that table is optional to use, um, and then uh, an environment variable. And you can see that when you hit configure, you need to get your Stripe API secret. Um, so first things first, there are some installation instructions. It tells you to go to the Stripe dashboard, create an account. Um, just a little disclaimer about test data versus live mode. Um, you can use test data, but when you're ready to go to live mode to put your application in production, there's some things that Stripe requires uh, to ensure that you are a real vendor. Um, I won't go through any of that. Um, that will be up to you, um, but I'll show you how to get your Stripe API secret. Um, so if we jump to Stripe and I have my developer portal open, um, or my Stripe account really. And we go to developers here on the right side. Um, there's this API key section here. Uh, so I can very easily, um, I'll go ahead, reveal the secret. I'll make sure to delete this later so no one uses it. Um, you can reveal it, copy that, uh, come back to Xano, hit configure, and then you can paste that in. And you can see now this extension is uh, configured. Let's go ahead. I'm going to jump to the API now and we'll just talk high level real quick, get an overview of uh, these different API endpoints that we're going to use. Um, the two main ones we're going to focus on first will be this um, post right here, sessions so that creates a session object. Um, I'm, we're not going to worry about any three of these gets. Uh, you probably don't really uh, need to use these. Um, and then also later on this webhook, and I'll talk a little bit more on that later, but let's focus on this create session object. Um, so the session object basically creates a checkout session. Um, a user will go to your page, they'll go to buy something. Uh, what will be inputted will be in this line items object here, will be something called um, basically a price ID that you'll get from the Stripe developer portal from the different products. I'll show you how to do that, the quantity. Um, and then you'll have you'll input these success URLs and cancel URLs. So what are those? So these are URLs in your front end where you want a user to be redirected to after they've completed the Stripe checkout. So a success URL, obviously, if the payment is successful. Um, and then the cancel URL if they either go back or something goes wrong. These are as inputs because maybe you want to make these uh, dynamic. If you're always going to be going to the same kind of two places, you could always hard code these values in either from the front end or in this API call. You can see it's very easy to manipulate these. You could even store them as environment variables and insert them there, um, but just a little FYI. I'll go ahead, I'll run this in the debugger first, then we'll hook it up to a front end. We'll use a bubble for this demo. Then we'll run, so we'll run through all that. So let's first jump back to our Stripe developer portal because we actually need to create some products in there so we can sell. So back in Stripe, if you just go to products right here, and you can see I created a product already, but I'll go ahead and do this fresh. I'll add a new product. You can give it a name, and I'll say uh, coolest product number two. 
if we scroll down here, there's different pricing models. You can uh, do a price. So maybe right here, I'll say something like $4.99 uh, US dollars. Uh, you can differentiate between re recurring or one time. Uh, so recurring, maybe if you're doing some kind of subscriptions, just know that in uh, the Stripe documentation, the line items uh, might require some different fields um, in that nested object based on if it's reoccurring or one time. If you wanna find that out, on our Marketplace page, we've linked up the Stripe Sessions documentation. You can go to that. Um, I actually have that open right here. Uh, and you can just go to the Create Session and you can see we'll just use price and quantity, which I'm going to use based on this curl command here. But if you just scroll down to line items and expand these, you can read all about what might be actually uh, needed based on the type of product you have, if it's recurring or a one time. So I'm just going to do one time for now. Let's go ahead. So I've got coolest product too. So I'll save this product. Uh, and when we do, we get to this product overview page in Stripe and Right here uh, under pricing, you can see I get this pricing API ID. And there is this unique, basically, identifier for this product and its price. Um, so we that's actually what we're going to want to use in that line items object and then the quantity of this. So for example, I'll copy this to my clipboard. Let's jump back to Xano. Um, let's open the debugger here. And so my line items would look something like this, I'll create uh, just an object here. So I'll say price, and then I'll actually paste that value in that I just copied from my Stripe developer portal. Um, and then we also need our quantity, and I'll just say uh, two for now. We would take a cancel URL here, example.com slash success, just, just for now. Um, we'll use a U, real URL later, and um, I might just say uh, cancel here just to keep it simple. I just want to show you what happens uh, if I actually go ahead and run this. So we basically get, um, you can see what we're returning here. We're returning the API call, response, result. So um, if I op actually open the debugger and we looked at this external API call, you can see we get um, request headers, this response, and then our results. So actually what we're returning here is just those results. You can see this is um, a large session object in here. So a lot of information is not included in here um, because it is actually omitted from this API call. If these are things you care about, make sure that you go through the Stripe API documentation and make sure you sync up what you need. So that's all available for you there. Um, great, so I just wanted to show you that. Let's go ahead and actually uh, link up this endpoint to our front end so we can see how it works actually live. So I'm gonna grab this endpoint URL right here. And I actually have just something very basic built up in bubble here. This will be my buy page where I can pick a quantity and the product. Um, I've created a success page that just says, thank you for the purchase. And they can go back to that buy page um, and then a failure page, uh, which just says something can go wrong and then it redirects them um, after like five seconds uh, back to that buy page. Um, great, so let's go to plugins and I'm gonna go to the API connector and I'll add a call here for Stripe checkout. This will be a post and this is, uh, we'll say sessions here and I'll post that endpoint URL right there. Um, we wanna use this as an action because we're gonna click a button and get directed uh, to this Stripe hosted checkout page the body here, let's go back to Xano. I can actually grab this and let me paste that in, but these values here, I wanna say uh, success URL. I'll actually type this in and skip ahead in the video. Okay, so what I've done is I've just set up real quickly this uh, JSON body for this post. We have these values basically being dynamic here, success URL, cancel URL, et cetera. Uh, price and quantity. I already put in that uh, API ID for the price of the product in here, an example quantity. Uh, now the success and cancel URL, just, I just have those one landing pages for success and cancel. I could technically leave these as private, which means they're not dynamic, but let me just go to, I have this uh, 
open on Bubble here, which is just a preview of my success page. I'm just going to grab the URL um, and come back to my other tab in Bubble. And I'll paste that in for success. And then also the cancel, which is slash fail. So I'll just uncheck these for now. But in my use case, I might hard code these in because I'm not having dynamic success and cancel URLs. Um, but great, we can initialize this call actually. And you can see we get the return values. I'll go ahead um, and just basically save this. What's going to be important is this URL included at the bottom. This is what we want to navigate to uh, when we click that buy button. So let me save this. Let's go back to our design and click on this buy now here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit start edit this workflow. So in Bubble here, in their workflow, we can go ahead and create actions when this button Buy Now is clicked. Uh, so that action I'm going to do is for my plugins, and it is just the Stripe Checkout. You can see the inputs here. We can actually map up. So in this case, uh, Success URL. I'm going to leave that as it just hard coded in there. Same with the Fail, because those are just the two landing page I'm going. I'm also just going to leave this price ID uh, in there because this price ID is just the one product I have. Um, this quantity I'll actually map up with dynamic values, just whatever that drop downs uh, value is. So we can make that dynamic there. Um, great, once that's called, uh, the next thing that we wanna do is actually go to navigation, open an external page. Uh, and if I insert dynamic data into this destination, I can do the result of our post session API endpoint. Uh, and grab that URL that I just mentioned, and that will be our location. Great, so now we're actually ready to uh, basically preview this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now that this preview has loaded, you can see I'm on this buy something page. Here's the coolest thing, this product. I can go ahead, um, I just made this picker up to seven. Let's go ahead and purchase seven of these. I'll hit buy now. And as I do that, I'll be redirected to that URL. You can see, that this Stripe hosted payment page uh, will actually be loaded. You can see uh, my price, here's my quantity at $4.99 each. The name of my product that I made in my uh, Stripe developer portal. And then we can put in some information. So I'll go ahead and fill this out real quick. Uh, so real quick, uh, with Stripe, you can use repeating four twos. Uh, as a test card if you're testing on, or if you're using test data mode, just so you can actually uh, initialize a payment. We're ready to actually go ahead and hit pay. And when I do that, we'll see that that got uh, accepted. And now I'm navigated back to my bubble uh, URL that I put in for my success. So it says, thank you for purchase. I can keep shopping. And I'm taken back to my page. Now, if I do this again, I'll just show the cancel real quick. I'll hit buy now and we're navigated back to Stripe. Um, but say I want to hit back. I was like, oh, just kidding. I don't want to buy that. Then we'll be navigated back to my cancel URL page. I have this set to redirect me after five seconds, just back to the buy something. Great. So coming back to Xano now, that's basically how you would use this post sessions um, API endpoint. Because this video has already been too long, I'm actually going to break it up into uh, two parts. Part two, um, I'm going to go over the webhook, which is super easy to set up. There's also just instructions on it right here um, on our marketplace page. And then I'm going to do a little basically customization to uh, um, the webhook and the sessions. Because a question that has come up is um, some users have asked, well, how do I track the use of my application uh, to the sessions that they're actually creating? So I'll go through how you can also do that as well. But if you're just wondering, hey, how do I um, implement payments into my application using the Stripe Checkout API endpoint? That's how you do it right there um, with the sessions object. Obviously, combining that with the Stripe developer portal to create products uh, so you can get that price ID can really make for uh, an effective uh, payments platform implemented into your application leveraged by Xano. Uh, so thanks for watching. Um, maybe stick around for the second video. Uh, if you like this one, please go ahead, subscribe to our channel, like it. It just helps uh, other people find this content that might be looking for it.